Hey, I'm Kev Kermus. Welcome back to MotoGP 19 and Kenny Roberts Laguna in 2004. Has Kenny Roberts Jr. had the misfortune not to dispute many World Championship Grand Prix at Laguna Seca on the tracks he knew best? It's no coincidence that his debut in the 250 class takes place right on the Californian circuit where he owns a sensational 10th place. The far near came A from 1995 to 2004, Laguna Seca was left out of the World Cup calendar. On his return in 2005, Suzuki and Kenny had left their best years behind them, 12th and qualifying 14th in the race. But the ride is true to his word and the Friday he makes a triumphant comeback. He is in the lead in the first and second free practice and returns to the front row with the third best time in qualifying. So we've got to be a 124.5 on his Suzuki GSVR. Oh, we're into electronic dashes now. This is pretty damn cool. Okay, maybe we can break a bit after the hip, after the rise. Wait, I said Kenny Roberts and Suzuki kind of for the drift. In 2004, They've been outside the top 10 in the championship. In 2005. Nowhere again. And then Kenny Roberts did his own team in 2006 and just came back, got podiums, finished in the top 10 in the championship and retired. It's like, I proved I was all right. Retired to run his team. His brother Curtis, I believe, riding for it. But he also had Shaky Burn ride for that team in 2005. See, I thought it was only one year the Brit was in for a GP, but in 2005 as well. Filled in for a Ninja Troy Bayless as well for a couple of rounds at the end of the year before Chris Vermillion replaced him. Uh, so that's a poor time. We're just exploring. Well, oh, it's so cool having the Guna Seika. Emoji. I do miss the Guna track, even though it never. It had its moments, no doubt. Didn't have its best races, though. It's the same with it being on IndyCar calendar. Like, it has moments. That's why the IndyCar and I actually been decent. I thought TV direction did pick up on lots of things, though. Like, most things nowadays, unfortunately. I guess back in the day as well, it's bad. But we've got more information to realise if we're small things now. Well, then back in the day. Oh, God's sake. Oh, you're allowed to do that. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah, the green Astro so Of course it counts. That's what Alex and Ardy taught me. And Casey Stoner and Vannington Rossi round there as well. Having their court screw battle. In 2008, I want to say. Sort my head. Oh, God, we haven't even got bronze yet. Oh, we can... Oh, no. We can use the touch of the rear brake. We could use it a bit more than that of Priya, actually. Which surprised me. Yeah, we can use it a bit on this bike. There's a couple of tents. Oh, this is going to take me a while, I reckon. Because of these big curves on the inside, I don't want to touch them. It's like driving the skippy round here in a high racing. On the mod track for Automobilista. Where I drive the Card Extreme mod round here. Still two tenths up.
Oh my god, come on! Hit the apex, you fool! No, that's not it. Yeah, that's why Kenny Roberts retired after the 2006 season. Uh, that's why you don't use the rear brake too much, so you can use it a tiny bit. But after the easy challenges of the last couple, nice to have a bit of a harder one again. Oh my god, mainly due to my own incompetence though. Can I go back to the Apria? I actually prefer that now. I also forgot that Jamie McWeens was still with Apria in 2004. So his teammates were shaky, but an all brick team. All them. And I said burn road a proton. Remember proton? I remember doing the BTCC with David Leslie being the charge. Winning a race as well, see? I know you get on the podium in the pro. I don't think you ever won a race, but... At least I don't remember that. But getting on the podium in the Proton against the might of the Voxels. Back then. And the Hondas. That was pretty cool. In the early thousands, that was. But yeah, Proton... Well, it's a Proton badged bike. It's kind of like a Honda thing underneath, or... Can't remember now. Yeah, it... The Bandit team just... Had a... Meltdown in partnership, midway through that season, so that's why Burn Road... The Camel Honda! I mentioned a couple of years ago, it's... Troy Bay is riding that. 2005, had an injury though, at the end of the season, so... Burn road it and then I said they didn't impress on the bosses so Chris Vermillion took over. It was their bright star in super bikes. Hang on, am I suddenly doing it? I am suddenly doing it. No! No! I'm not. Don't know why I pulled that out my fat ass from nowhere, but it seems like we got the pace. There we go. Get on the power nice and smooth. And I do hope we can ride this Chris Vermillion. Like on the Suzuki. He was a wet weather master. One at Le Mans, if I remember, in the wet. Had a pretty cool personality as well with his... With that hat that Lando Norris always wears with Antonio Rossi's. Except, you know, the Moons wasn't of Rossi, but... He yeah, just had a... Pretty laid back, cool personality. It's so him alongside John John Hopkins, who kind of were battling to lead that team. I remember Hopkins actually finishing top four in the championship one there, despite never winning a race at MotoGP level. He was very strong before. Those personal issues, unfortunately, and injuries eventually piled up on Hopkins. Same for Vermillion, injuries just piled up on the Aussie, unfortunately. He has no two tenths back. But that's a no in using the gravel to slow down trick. Very popular around here in the Gunya Saker. Uh, so, oh, Rear, what are you doing? Off front. 
kind of locking up the brakes there into the first two right-handers. Oh, I've gone back to being rubbish again. Yeah, it's going to take a while. And you can use that tarmac on the outside. I've had that's the eagle. Oh, I'm up. No. That surprised me out of nowhere. Messed up the next corner. Keep going. God's sake. I had that and then I just surprised myself. By being quick, as I know, as the odd occasion happens where that, well, I am quick, and then I'm like, what? And just make a mistake immediately. See, that's why I'm never consistent. I'm shocked when I'm actually doing well. So there we go in the reds. So yeah, I mostly remember that Suzuki team of Hopkins and Vermeulen of the mid to late thousands. Well, as I said, Hopkins had his issues, Vermeulen had his injury problems. And then Alvaro Baptista came in. I know, Lars Caparossi came in because Stoner blew him away in 2007 and Jukata were like, yeah, we've got our lead rider now. You can go away. Same for, you know, the Vair pin. Do at MotoGP level, but... This one got strains a bit better than you. And that's after Caparossi battling for the 2006 title. Stun and then just blew everyone away in 2007. That was that. That's no, we did it. Oh, we did it with a penalty, though. So yeah, then Kappa Rossi led that team with Baptista, and then Baptista took over by himself in 2011. And then we said goodbye to Suzuki. It's right, that Baptista, as Baptista does, been very good. And then making you wonder why the hell he's on the bike. Or making a silly mistake or just lack of pace or concentration. Oh, here you go. Sure, he got it now done. And I do like Baptista, but yeah, he can be infuriating to follow. Much like he was the past Superbike season. And to be fair, some of the quotes that come out post-season, you can understand why. His form just fed off a cliff in the second half of the year. Compared to, you know, the first few rounds. As, there we go, eventually done it. Let's just say he and Ducati did not see eye to eye. And yeah, some strong quotes after the divorce has next up the German Emperor, Max Biaggi on that Camel Honda. There we go. One of, one of the very good days he had on the bike. So South watching and we'll see if we can repeat Roman Emperor next time.